Well, welcome to the latest edition of TV on the Net. I'm your host, Tom Vartani, and today's show brought to you by AmeriCube Credit Union. For every day, for everything, located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By Ryan Angle Creek Farm and Marathon, all natural pasture-raised Angus beef from our farm to your table. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance to Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary-specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customers' needs for innovative graphic designs, custom imprinted apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607 753 182 1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe and Marathon, open seven days a week for sit-in dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carry-out and catering for some events. Check them out online for more uh, online at rileyscafe.com or call 607-849-6434. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck coming this spring. And by Crop Growers LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact Casey Slade at 607 591 2460 for more information. Well, this we, we kind of just joked before we got started today. This was actually a, a, a podcast, half a season in the making. We did get to talk to this guy at the uh, Albany MVP Arena there last weekend, but uh, as far as just the regular season, it kind of uh, took a little while before we could really get him together and get his voice back, but he got his voice back at the right time in the year, and uh, so joining us today is the uh, Homer Wrestling Coach, which we'll is kind of follow up, we'll wrap up the wrestling season, we t- did all the stuff last week here at the state championships, and what now we're going to talk about, not only a little, we'll recap that a little bit, but also talk about uh, the entire team, because there are some good guys that just didn't qu- quite make the trip to Albany and so it was a very good season for the Homer Trojans but joining us is the wrestling coach here Jason Reynolds welcome Jason Tom thank you thanks for having me I know uh it has been a little bit where we've been setting up some times and it just didn't work out but you know I'm pretty elusive for a big man so. <laughs> okay so let's, before we talk about the whole season let's just it's just while well, still fresh in our mind just you know just last weekend you know you know history made kind of for Homer uh, first time there's been two Guys, I I can't remember too many times there were two Homer wrestlers at all at the state tournament, much less two of them that uh, made the uh, finals. And of course, both of them. That is, of course, Taylor Hubbard at one hundred and ten pounds and Sam Sorensen at two fifteen. But uh, kind of a side note that all that is, you know, Homer with a measly two wrestlers finished uh, seventh in the team standings overall with you know fifty. Uh, let's see what it was and the final total fifty eight points. So I mean. But you looked at, you know, the teams ahead of you. Tioga, of course, 146 points, was the team champion out of Section 4. Uh, our favorite team in the wrestling season, Central Valley Academy, was third overall, the top Section 3 team with 88 points. And then Windsor, uh, with 74 points from Section 4, was fourth. And then Homer, you know, in seventh place. So, I mean, that's, it was uh, as much as it was with two guys, to, you know, for as, you know to put up that, you know, that many points. And, you know, actually, you know, you know it was a nice, you know, top 10 finish for the, heat, you know, it's a team score. I, well, it's funny you say that. I actually had a friend of mine uh, out of Section 4 call me a few nights ago, um, actually Tuesday night, and, and he asked me, he said, do you realize where you guys finished in the team race? And, and I really had no clue, um, which I think is kind of indicative or, or kind of reflective of what we try to do. You know, we went there to do a job with our two athletes and, and that we were hyper-focused on that all weekend. Uh, 
so I, you know, I told him, I said, no, and it, and, and yes, it's nice. It's nice. But I, you know, getting both of those young men on the podium, that was our main goal. And, and that's what made the weekend for us. And ironically, you know, that not just there for like the Central Valley Academy and you guys, the top two uh, Section 3 teams. You guys, uh, as far as the section, edged out Section 4. It's kind of nice. Both local sections, uh, one, two, uh, Section 3 with 219 points and uh, then uh, Section 4 with 212 points. Only two sections to post 200 points in Division 2. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, uh, I think you know this, Tom, I'm an old Section 4 cat, so from uh, way back. <clears throat> excuse me way back in the day so i you know i still have a lot of friends over there actually uh my high school coach probably uh probably one of the guys who i revere the most in our sport um uh, rick armstrong is actually the section four coordinator so you know we had a lot of fun with it all weekend and and they actually knew going in um you know i think section three had three guys in the finals and um you know two out of the three needed to win in order for us to win the the team title and you know it just so so happened that the two that did win were both from homer so as you said tailing you know a nice weekend you know uh went you know went four and oh started out with a you know it's funny the first two matches he had uh the one over uh dylan nolan was a pin uh, excuse me actually the one before that was the uh joshua layers uh was a uh, pinfall in 132 then it was dylan nolan in the second round actually out of the uh Section three era. The uh, the longest name maybe Jordan Elbridge, Port Byron, Union Springs, and Cato Meridian, kind of the combined <laughs> team there for them. But also the exact same time, through one thirty two was the uh, pinfall there too. So that got him to the semifinals and uh then in reality probably his toughest match of the uh of the tournament was that semifinal match up and of course that was just a kid over the hill in Groton, Aaron uh, Aiden Schufelt and uh of course uh, out of that was a four two victory for a tail in. Again, a battle of reversals. They each got a reversal in the second period. Then uh, Taylor got one there kind of in the latter parts of that third period, and that was the difference in the 4-2. And so as Aiden joked, yeah, I, lost, I said, well, you lost to the state champ. That's a good thing. He said, yeah, no, he lost by two points. And he's right, and that was the closest of the two decisions at the end. And the finals, again, I uh, win as well for uh, uh, Taylor over uh, I go back here, uh, Andrew uh, Spalding, the uh, – Third seed again, a guy out of Section Five, Honeyoyu Falls, Lima, on a, a three nothing decision. I mean, that wasn't an easy one, but actually, it almost seems like the uh, the match against Aiden turned out to be the toughest in the semifinals. But you know, when it counted, you know, two matches he had to win, you know, and go the distance. Um, you know, Taylor again four and zero in a state championship. Well, <clears throat> I think you know. Well, number one, none of them are easy at the state tournament. Um, you know, regardless if you win in dominant fashion or you win close, I mean, the goal is to get your hand raised, keep moving forward, keep marching forward. Um, I think the most important match for Talon uh, was the second match against um, Cuga County there. Uh, <laughs> Nolan from uh, from the combined school over there at Jordan Elbridge, a lot of good people over there doing the right things. Uh, um, coaches, good guys. We actually practiced there uh, one day throughout the week leading up to the state tournament. Um, I thought that was probably his most important match just because it was a statement win. Um, you know, we knew we knew uh, uh, Nolan, he's tough. Uh, he's tough. He's tough on top. Um, and, and, you know, at the state tournament, you, you know, I'm sure you saw all weekend, you know, those kids that are dangerous, you know, they pose problems, especially, uh, you know, for those kids that like to control a match, you know, kind of stay on, you know, get on top, stay on top and get your hand raised. Um, and then Talon out there in dominant fashion, um, you know, really went out, took him down, pinned him, game over. Uh, and and I think that right there, and and of course there was there was plenty of of times throughout the end of the season, well the season, the end of the season, and you know before the state tournament that I think really put him on the path to success. But I think as far as that that weekend, I think that that was the match that really propelled him to the state championship. And of course, a fine season for him as well, thirty-six and two on the year. So I mean, a very nice debut for a sophomore, no less. I mean, I I, I thought he was. I thought maybe he was a junior or something because I know he did have some Cortland connections and stuff and kind of came over. So I thought maybe he was a little bit later. But you know, his first real varsity season, and he was you know thirty-six and two. That that's impressive. Oh, incredibly impressive. Um, and and to be honest with you, um, not knowing with with the COVID year last year, um, you know, not knowing. You, you know, you you wonder how some of those kids who didn't get that experience throughout um, the COVID year how they were going to respond. Now that being said, you know, Talon's incredibly hard worker. He 
you know, he definitely put in the time. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize uh, just because Sammy was kind of the, you know, the bigger name up until this year <clears throat> and, and throughout this season that t- Talon, Talon wrestled a lot of the same term as Sammy did throughout the entire off season. So um, that's a credit, you know, to his dad. That's a credit to Talon. You know, every weekend they were going somewhere and, and trying to get better, and he most certainly did. One thing I, I kind of laughed at when we talked uh, at the down there in Albany after his match stuff, you know, got him on there and after the ceremony and everything, got him sat down. We talked a little bit and stuff, and he said, "Yeah, no, he probably will be 110 again next year." He said, "I maybe could have got down to 208 or down to the 102, possibly." But he said, "110 worked for him," but he said he'd lost weight. He said, "Like he, came, he said, I came into the season kind of chubby." I just got funny. He admitted, "I came in chubby," and so that was it was it was some work to get down to 110, and then I got there and I was comfortable there. Yeah. Well, you know, that's just that's kind of reflective of his work ethic. You know, Talon, Talon's not much of a yo-yo kid, meaning, you know, after a competition he doesn't shoot up and then, you know, bust his own chops to get back down. He's, he's very disciplined, very disciplined with his nutrition, with his training, um, which worked in his favor. And, you know, wrestling, it's a long season. It's a long season. He was able to maintain that strength, but he did. His weight, you know, his weight kind of leveled out and, um, you know, at the end of the year, it was just a matter of making sure he wasn't too light. Well, I laughed. It's funny how much guys' weight can fluctuate at the tournament because actually I, Saturday morning I was talking to Mitch Bush, who's got the connection here to Cortland and lives in Cortland and walking around with Homer gear on Saturday, very proud as a sideline official and stuff that he was doing then. We're, we're very proud said, to have Mitch wear that stuff. <laughs> but uh, he said that actually the kid uh, from Dryden, Josh Rowland, came in and wrestled like five pounds over the whole first day by the time it did his last match on friday was done he was three tenths of a pound under a oh boy so i mean so he lost almost you know he lost over five pounds just in a day of wrestling and, and again it's all individual you know wrestling definitely has a stereotype related to weight um you know that's kind of with the new you know the rule changes and different things that that's kind of worked itself out um but really it comes down to you know who's going to be the most disciplined you know, and, and it's part of, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't just happen that day. That's got to be part of your, you know, your season routine. You got to learn, learn about yourself, learn about your body, and learn what works best for you in order, to, in order to compete at the highest level. And, of course, the other state champion dropped weight, too. He was around 230, 240 for football season. He just looks mammoth anyways, but he's trimmed it down to a swell of 215 for wrestling season. And, uh, that of course, is Sam Sorensen. And, again, he was uh, – I laughed. His first match, I saw him wrestle more of that first match than I did when I came over and watched him wrestle here. He lasted 10 se- it only took 10 seconds in the match. I saw him wrestle against Casanova. And uh, so he won his first round match against uh, Jacob uh, Cassidy uh, in a 49 second pinfall. Then the next round, it was uh, Matthew uh, Osteram out of uh, Port Jarvis down in Section 9 area. A pinfall again at 237. Then, well, a little bit pushed, just a little bit. He got into the second period against, uh, let's see, Trevor Barry out of a round acquaintance, section six, and it took him a whole three minutes and three seconds to uh, win that one. So he didn't have to go the distance in any match up to the finals. And then, of course, it was it really, it was a classic battle, really, at the end. I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, Sammy uh, ends up 47-0 and with that last win, and uh, the guy he took on was Trent Sybil out of Bolivar Richford, Richburg in Section 5. He was 51-0 and going into that match, so, I mean, you had 96 wins and no losses on the map for the final, and, uh, again, it took him, you know, into the uh, overtime period. They, the one-minute overtime period, they, uh, you know, neither one scored. It was, I think it was 1-1 after regulation. Then it was still 1-1 after the one-minute then you go to the, the two thirty second, uh, you know, sudden, you know, those are run the whole thing out there. They're doing the whole thirty seconds. The guy gets, you know, if the guy gets escaped, you still get a chance for a takedown, or the other guy gets a chance to come back. But uh, Sammy, you know, escaped there in the first of those two thirty seconds. He got the second point of the match, and then he uh, he had to hold down uh, Sybil in that third, that second thirty second overtime, and he did that and came out with, you know, like you know, a very you know a long match, but an exciting match, a two one victory for his state title. Well. <clears throat> you know, Sammy was in on uh, three separate leg attacks where he almost scored at the end of the first, almost scored in the second, and right at the end of regulation in the third. Um, but, you know, he, you know, Sammy's a young man that can beat you in a variety of different ways. And I think no matter where a match goes, I think that's part of, well, one of the many reasons why he's so good. 
Um, he's good everywhere. Um, you know, and not just in situ- in positions, but also in situations. And and kind of we we joked. We we went up to the stands uh, stands after the match, and um, we had a we had a phenomenal Homer contingent uh, there supporting our boys and supporting Section Three. And uh, you know, a lot of people were saying, you know, boy, I was you know I was so nervous. And coach, that you you know you must have been dying. I said, my honest response was too, uh, no. You know, I wasn't because um, I think Sammy referenced this in, in one of his interviews that, you know, it's a classic Sammy Sorensen match, which I would agree with to a point because this year he's definitely been, you know, we've really focused hard on widening the gap and separating yourself, and he's done that. Um, you know, but let's not forget this was in the state finals. And, you know, I think he controlled the entire match. Um, and then, you know, I, I looked at him at one point right before overtime. I said, you've been here a million times. You know, just just do what you do, and and he most certainly went out and did that. Got his hand raised. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many games he saw during the season, but he 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 agreed with me. I said that the hardest part, I think, was the arms, the height, and the long legs that uh, Sybil had. So he had him that wise, and that's the first time Sammy could get up on a guy, but he couldn't really put him down because his long legs. He made it hard for him to get up, and he. Actually, I had to leave his feet to do that, and I don't think he's comfortable leaving his feet to try to power the guy down. But that's almost what he had to do. So I mean, so that that was the big challenge. Well, and and the important thing was too, uh, Sammy's got an incredibly high wrestling IQ, which is rare in high school athletes. And he at at no point did he force. You know, he didn't need the force. Um, he controlled the match. Um, you know, and it, like I said, at the end of the day, that's what he does. He he's in control, aggressive, and he did. Uh, Sybil was very tough. Make mo- no mistake about it. And like you said, going in with over ninety some odd wins, you know, between the two of them, um, you know, the other thing is too, they're both juniors. Yeah, that's so, I was just looking at. Yeah, they're both. Yeah, juniors. They're so both they could they could do so. this again next year. Yeah, <laughs> but so, uh, the potential's there for sure. And all I well, put it this way, I sat for the whole first day. And the first half of Saturday, when we moved, and we had to leave the arena for a couple hours while they reset everything up. I got on the other side, and these two guys they were they were blogging whatever for some for some, some something to do with Section Five. I'm not quite sure what, but they're up and far. You know, you're not supposed to be cheering on the thing, but they're there cheering and they're to tell me, oh, there's no way Sybil should have been the uh, seventh seed. You know, he's undefeated. How is he seventh seed and all this? And I guess there's criteria, and a lot of things involved in it. So you, you kind of wonder how the guy with that good a record be seated so much more like middle pack kind of you know barely you know top 10 and what well, because he showed how good he was overall but uh well i i wouldn't disagree with him tom yeah you know he he's definitely you know you you look at everybody you look at everybody but he was definitely one of those guys on our radar um you know who who we knew was talented who we knew was good you know not just because of his record but you know we we i think we do a good job at homer uh you know, between the kids and our coaching staff, uh, you know, scouting, uh, do a lot of film work. And, uh, you know, he he was definitely top three on my list, um, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a certain set of criteria that the state uses. And, um, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of competition points um, just based on, the, you know, their schedule and, and where they had been. So, I mean, he he fell where he fell and, and – uh, you know, lucky for him, he was on the bottom side away from Sammy. Yeah. Like I said, and, and this shows, that just shows how the lower seeds come up through. Like Aiden, Aiden Schufeld, I think, was like the 12th seed overall in the 110, and he wrestled phenomenal the whole the whole tournament that, before he met uh, Talon, Talon in the finals. Well, and, and I, I said this, I think I said this Saturday night to you. I, you know, we saw when, when Talon wrestled Aiden, I think we wrestled the best version of Aiden. Aiden, very talented. You know, he's a lot of experience, ton of experience on the youth level. Um, but he had really, um, without knowing the scores right offhand, I, I think he, he was having a pretty dominant tournament himself. Uh, you know, a couple, you know, a couple uh, matches where he was up, I think, 1-7-0, and uh, maybe in the quarters it was 7-0, but he was wrestling a great tournament. And, and I got to be honest with you, I, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for those Groton guys over there, Coach Rotunda, and and his staff and just good people you know they do it for the right reasons and and they definitely had him prepared yeah no he won his first match by majority of decision 12-1 then it was six nothing win and a seven nothing win to set yep. up the match with Taylor so yeah yep. so he I mean yeah for he was on a roll he was so you know and those those are dangerous uh dangerous wrestlers to me especially at a tournament as prestigious as the state tournament 
So as you said, state tournament uh, in a rear view mirror, uh, that's all well and good. But again, this was as much as we talked about, you know, those two guys over the weekend and a lot of the time we were talking about them. Um, let's not forget, this team won the uh, division championship, 4-0 in division matches this year, 18-3 and overall. This was a very good, one of the better homer teams to come down the road in the past three years, 18 wins overall this year. Yeah, and, and really where I thought maybe, you know, we we're very talented, uh, very talented, hard workers. Um, where, where I thought we did maybe the best was navigating through, you know, through a post-COVID season, um, you know, sicknesses. I know a couple losses we took early in the season. I mean, we were missing four to five guys with the flu. Um, and guys stepped up. Guys stepped up. We run, won a lot of close matches at the CV duels. Um, I mean, that's a big dual tournament where, you know, going into it, you're expecting nine matches. We ended up getting seven because a couple teams had to drop out because of COVID. Um, I was probably, you know, as much or more impressed with our guys with their resolve at that tournament than I was uh, throughout the remainder of the season. That was, that was a tough tournament for us, not only with who we were missing, but it was early um, and a lot of good competition there. And you finish second. And ironically, you know, there are two very familiar names that uh, have a lot to do with Homer football down the road here. But uh, that first loss of the season, it was Maine Edwell in the first round of the uh, oh, of the yeah. turn down Shenango Valley, thirty yeah. uh, six to twenty five. But then you came back to the Susquehanna Valley, Groton, Oneana, then uh, actually lost to uh, CNS. You know, so there was a bigger school. I mean, Maine Edwell was a, you know was a good for, you know their class. You know, bigger school in CNS, and then but you came back and beat Binghamton and uh, beat Shenango Valley in the long run. So I mean, that's that is some pretty good, you know, that's a good group of tournaments there. And then throw it in, you go down, and you know, people say, well, they finished fourteenth at Windsor, but you know what, fourteenth at the Windsor tournament is is like a is like a fourteenth place finish in a state meet because there is almost more talent there at times than there is at a state meet in Windsor. Oh, there's <laughs> Windsor is a grinder. Windsor's grinder, and, and we only took six kids to that t- to that tournament. Now, um, you know, team scores being what it was, uh, we actually had a really good tournament at Windsor, um, and and I think that's you know that's where the better teams, the better indivi- the better individuals, um, really find out where they stand. You know, not only where they are, but where they need to be. And, and you know, a lot of times you can learn a heck of a lot more from a loss than you can just rolling through people or wrestling it you know, tournaments or competitions that aren't at that level. You know, that's the main reason we go to Windsor. And then, of course, uh, you know, again, the team rolling and the uh, only other three losses during the dual meet season, the uh, first of uh, a number of encounters with Central Valley Academy. Of course, they're stinging from the football season. You know, Homer beat them in football. And well, you guys in football, but like I said, they were determined to, they come out, they uh, knocked you guys out of the uh, Section 3 Division 2 dual meet tournament with a 46-21 win and then of course they were, you know, above you in the Class B tournament and also in the Division Two tournament. So Central Valley said, well, "We got our revenge here." You know, they yeah. they just were overall just a little bit deeper team, but you know, because they've always been a strong team, also. Anyways, uh, they're they're, I mean, make no mistake about it, they're the class of our section right now in small schools. Well, some say overall class of our section, and um, you know, the thing that I'm proud of is that whether we're wrestling CVA, um, well. Actually, we were seated fifth at the Section 3 duels. And, um, <clears throat> again, because of seating criteria with, you know, different things and how certain teams land, just like the individual seed we talked about uh, previously at the state tournament. Um, you know, we were the five seed. General Brown was a four seed who had been ranked first for, for you know, uh, a few weeks in the season, most of the season up until that point. Um, and we, we had uh, – that was probably uh, – well, I can say, you know, one of our uh, most certainly one of I hate to put it in terms of my or me, but, you know, one of my signature wins as a head coach was definitely that match. Uh, Mike Hartle's a good friend of mine, head coach over there. They've they've had a phenomenal program, um, really, really do a lot of great things. And we actually ended up winning that match on criteria. We got a couple wins out of guys, a couple pins out of guys uh, that changed the outcome of the match. And, you know, we had to battle just to get to CVA um, in the semis. I. I, tell, I, I told the guys, I, uh, you know, I would have liked to have been on the other half of the bracket to see how far we could have gotten there. I honestly feel like we would have gotten to the Section 3 dual finals. Um, but, again, 
you know, things happened for a reason, and, and we were able to get that win over General Brown, who at that point they were ranked fifth fifth in the state um, through uh, New York State Writers Association at that point. So looking at the team, I want to focus mainly on the seniors because these are the guys we won't get to see another time. Uh, but, you know, some other, you know, as much as Sammy got a lot of headlines, a lot of stuff like that, uh, let's talk about some of the seniors. Xander Johnson had a nice 32-8 and eight record, mainly at 189 this year, and a, you know, 32 and eight this year finished with 73 career wins. So I mean, uh, you know, a nice, you know, a nice season for Xander. I I just remember as a soccer player and he played football that one year and other stuff. I just forgot. Yeah, he's a wrestler and he he showed he had a good he was a good wrestler. Yeah, Xander was also actually uh, one of our captains this year too. Um, he had a phenomenal season. Uh, he showed a lot of leadership. Um, he's another one um, that boy I really felt poorly for him not having that COVID season because even without that season, like you said, he finished with 73 wins, which is uh, top 25 on, uh, on on Homer's individual career record list. Um, and, and that's without last season. Um, you know, we had Blair Wakula had a phenomenal season. You know, he, uh, he really stepped up. Um, you know, probably showed the most improvement from two years ago until this year was probably Blair. Um, of course, you know, he had a pretty good practice partner in the room. You know, with, with Sammy, you're either going to get better or, or you're either going to get better or or you might find another sport. But um, Blair attacked it head on and really took full advantage of that. I was, I was thoroughly impressed with his progress throughout the year. He's one of those guys along with Xander, um, you know, along with Hunter Lines, who, who was not a senior, um, only a freshman. But uh, – those those were a few guys who you know really had their opportunity to get to the state tournament as well with you know uh, how the state changed us section three being such a strong small school section top three top three placers in the sectional tournament going to states and and all of those guys took fourth and that was uh, that was heartbreaking. Yeah, and that was the only that was the only bad part for Blair. He had to wrestle Sammy, <laughs> and, and you know in the, the terms of count. But yeah, Blair uh, thirty one and eleven this year. Uh, finished with 43 career wins, but 31 of them came this year, his senior year, and uh, it was always fun. Like I said, I saw, you know, well, I saw the for the Cavs match, and Katie noticed it a couple of times. My daughter went to shooting games this year, uh, matches. That it was funny, wrestling a 215 Sam Sorensen or Blair Wakula, and you can see the guys on the other the other other team going like. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll, we want my cooler. We don't want Sammy. It's, you know, it was always like, okay, well, we got to take one of them, but it was, we'll, we'll take our chances with Blair. But <laughs> well, I, I think they quickly found out they didn't want either one of them. Yeah, uh, you know, um, and that was that was kind of a, you know, it's, it's it's easy to be confident as a coach when, especially if the match starts early, you know, because we didn't have a one hundred two pounder. Uh, you know, we were giving up a forfeit all year long at one hundred two, but uh, you know. As you know, as a coaching staff and as a program, it's kind of nice to start out with a hammer like Talon Hubbard at 110, mm -hmm. you know, and then finish with a you know a couple other hammer. Well, actually, kind of murderer's row right there, 89 to 15 heavyweight with Xander, Xander, and then any combination of Blair and and Sammy at 215 and, and 285. And the one guy just kind of caught on the uh, outside looking in because he wrestled mainly at 285 this year was a, another senior. Uh, David Melchak, you know, seven and seven this year. But again, like you say, when you get the other two studs there, it's that's just three guys that you're kind of in pretty good shape almost. Which two end up going out there? And Taven showed a lot of improvement uh, as well during the year. Finished out his career with uh, 36 wins, also on the positive side of a 500 re career record. Well, talk about taking advantage of an opportunity. Uh, you know, once we decided that Blair and, and Sammy were both going to wrestle at 215 because that's where both of them were, were strongest. Um, you know, Taven had had an opportunity to wrestle at the class tournament and, and um, really wrestled well. Uh, probably the best I've seen Taven wrestle in his in his entire career. Um, you know, showed a lot of poise. Was I mean, he was out there to win. He was out there to battle, and, and you got to love that. And of course, another guy at the finish on the plus side for the season. Uh, not for his career, but for this season, a very good year. Uh, no, the senior David Moore is 19 and uh, 17 this year, 30 and 37 overall. But you figure this year he wrestled at 160. But my recollections back in the days, you're getting anywhere between that 145 to that 172, even 138 through 138 into that mix. That's a tough weight class, and a lot of the time that's where David was. He was in, you know, he was in the heart of some of the toughest weight classes uh, in the section. Well, in, in David, 
you know, David, uh, you know, the certification process kind of got David a little bit too, because he's so lean, he's so strong and he, and he, uh, you know, really wasn't able to how certifications work based on, you know, hydration and body fat, you know, based on the process, David wasn't allowed to lose too much weight. I mean, he was, he was pretty light for 160 throughout the season. Um, but David worked, David worked and, and he was one of those guys who, um, you know, especially during a, you know, a dual meet, you know, he was one of those guys that we looked to, we looked to to win. Um, you know, he was kind of that linchpin, you know, right in the middle. Um, especially, you know, right after, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of depth from, from like, you know, 126, 132 through, through 152, you know, some tough kids, you know, but not a lot of experience there. And then once we got to David, you know, that's where we needed to start our run. And generally we did. Um, Dave is one of the guys who I was referring to uh, against in that general Brown duel meet at the section three duels. Um, he was wrestling um, a real good kid and ended up pinning him. And uh, those six bonus points, so they were huge for us. And, and actually he was one of the two matches in particular that I thought won the duel for us. How about, like you mentioned him already, you know, he's only a freshman, 30 win season for him, though 30 and 11 this year. Uh, talk a little bit more about Hunter Lines. I, I, again, t- Hunter's, Hunter's incredibly athletic, um, you know, but he was another he was another kind of question mark coming into the season. You know, what were we going to get out of Hunter? Um, not because he wasn't capable, just because, you know, of experience. Um, and and I tell you, he's, he's – uh, he also benefited from having a phenomenal partner in, in the room in talent. Um, they wrestled together a lot. And, uh, you know, I think talent or uh, Hunter kind of adopted, even though he's always had that, but he kind of adopted a, a, a deeper level of that pit bull mentality. Um, and I joke with other coaches. Um, I mean, to win 31 matches with our schedule as a freshman, wrestling 118 pounds is, is pretty impressive. But I joke with other coaches. I said, you know, I would, sometimes I wish his matches were 30, 40 minutes long because he, he will not stop. You know, he's one of those guys who he gets, he makes everybody wrestle him. He gets the most out of himself and, and you know, kind of, kind of inherently along with that type of attitude, he gets the most out of other guys, you know, and, and you know, that's, that's the type of mentality, that's the type of physicality that's going to keep winning him a ton of matches. No, one of those guys that should be back next year. He's only a junior this year, 16 and 17 on the year, but still with a 35 and 30 career record at this point with a year to go. Uh, wrestled at 126. He may be small height-wise, but, he, you know, he fights. You saw it on the football the field this year. And uh, Jeffrey Stopper. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff's another one of those guys kind of along the same lines of, you know, we, we, needed, we needed Jeff to, um, you know, we, we needed Jeff, especially in the lightweights. You know, the lightweights right before we got to, you know, the 132 to 152 range that I was speaking about earlier. Um, you know, Jeff didn't have the season that I think he expected or wanted. And but, you know, not a lot of people. His, his record isn't indicative of of what kind of a wrestler Jeff Stauber is. You know, um, he you know, he showed I know this you know, how much growth he made from the beginning of the season to the end because he picked up a lot of momentum his freshman year. Uh, really, really finished his season strong, and he's another one that COVID, you know, COVID hurt him, you know, with the lack of matches, with the lack of mat time. Um, you know, so he, the first part of the season, probably the first third of the season, you know, he was really trying to find that mat awareness again in that mat sense. Um, you know, and Jeff's, you know, Jeff's going Jeff's gonna to give you all he's got. You know, and, and I think a lot of times <clears throat> Jeff puts so much pressure on himself that he kind of loses sight. You know, he loses sight sometimes of how talented he really is and how much how high his ceiling is. Um, because you know, Jeff, when he's on, boy, he's he's a lot of fun to watch, and and he's a formidable opponent for anybody. And then again, on 172, one of those you know where you're wanting to build that momentum, kind of a. a Cold work out in that time. One of them was only still only a junior. Owen Murphy was five and nine there, but uh, also the other one was a sophomore, Maddox Johnson, who finished seventeen or fourteen and twelve. So I mean, you know, two two guys that one next year, you know, if they grow a bit, as you know, going into becoming seniors, one of them could, you know, move up to eighteen. But you know, two guys that could, you know, fare very well next year on that heavier side of stuff. Well, we fully expect them to do very very well. 
We really do. You know, they keep making the improvements, um, especially this year with that with that consistency. You know, we're going to get into our off season. You know, club work and freestyle and Greco, and you know, we're going to have a local camp again, and 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 maybe do something different with another camp, and and hopefully get some matches and you know get on the mat a little bit with those guys. I, we fully expect them to make those improvements and and really hit the ground running. You know, at the start of next season. And a couple more younger guys uh, this year that made, you know, well, one was younger. One, one was actually a senior. He wrestled at 118 this year, 11-9 uh, record, but the wrestled at, you know, that 118 spot was a counter powers. And then back, uh, at, you know, 145, he worked his way in off and on 10-11, and 11, but he's, again, only a freshman, so a limited experience, uh, Christopher Slade. Yeah, I, I'd say two of my favorite guys on the team, and, and honestly two of the harder workers on the team, too. You know, starting with counter powers, he's – for all intents and purposes, he's only wrestled for one year. And, you know, he, he won a lot of matches. And, and he was, especially, you know, at that at, at those lighter weights, you're, you need guys that are going to battle. And, you know, Connor Powers is going to battle. Um, you know, again, he was big at the CV duels, um, you, you know, because we didn't, we didn't have talent at those duels. Um, so he stepped in, you know, wrestled, wrestled 118, wrestled hard. Um, and again, whether, whether he's getting his hand raised or not, I think a lot of our team, they draw confidence and motivation from somebody who's going to put that kind of, that kind of effort out on the mat. Um, you know, Connor is another one who he will wrestle the entire six, seven, eight, however many minutes he's on the mat. Uh, you know, he's not going to stop. He's going to go hard. He's, uh, you know, Connor, you know, Connor's a phenomenal young man, and I really enjoy him a lot. And then moving on to Christopher Slade, he, you know, another guy who, you know, he's really put in a lot of work, put in a lot of work. And I think, you know, physically, once he matures a little more, you know, I think people are going to be surprised um, at what Christopher can do because, you know, he's shown the ability to win matches. You know, he's he's put in – he's really he's wrestled a lot of a lot of tournaments he's he has a lot of experience especially at the youth level and you know he does the right things yeah i don't think you know he uh <clears throat> we coach uh one of our assist or we joke one of our assistant coaches this year and and not to go into specifics but uh coach dubuque is our strength and conditioning guy um you know as 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 well as a phenomenal coach in the room and uh there was a couple of things that um I, I know if he was speaking to you right now, he would tell you probably one of his his biggest accomplishments this year was was a couple of things that Christopher was was able to accomplish in in the weight room, and uh, you know those are the types of things that you know not only kids you know but individual it, individuals can build on just to lead them to even more success because he he overcame a big hurdle in that weight room and. You know, I think at the end of the year, I think that positively affected his confidence, especially in the matches like, you know, the Cortland duel, you know, where he came back and had a, a, a big pin for us. And a couple other guys, uh, again, uh, two of these guys were, were at 152 during the year. One was a sophomore, Dominic uh, Burlingame, nine, he picked up nine was this year. The other side of it was a, uh, well, there was a junior in there, Aiden Lowell. He picked up a couple of wins. Um, so you had those two in that mix, and then of course another one at 118 as only a junior, and he he picked up 13 wins. And really, I just I just laugh how like Sammy, I've watched him grow up and how much taller he's gotten, how much more confident he's gotten in his uh, his uh, just overall presence. Uh, Lucas Quinn. Yeah, yeah, at 138, you mean? Yep. Yeah, Lucas, and and again, Lucas is another guy that started late. Uh, you know, he's tight with Sammy and. And uh, he started late, and we knew very early on um, what kind of potential Lucas has. I mean, he's he's an athletic young young man, um, and you know, Lucas was he was that guy in the middle. He was that guy in the middle at 138 between those weight classes, 138 and 152. Who we really in a lot of duels we needed him to win. We needed him to perform, and and most often he did that. Um, again, Lucas is another another kid with a another young man with a high ceiling. You know, he puts in the work and. Um, you know, he's another one that can come out next year and I think really surprise people. It wouldn't surprise us because we know what kind of, you know, character and work ethic he has. Um, how about, yeah, how about Dominic? Dominic, he was, he's right there, in my opinion, he's right there with Blair as far as making the biggest improvement throughout the season. Um, 
you know, there was a couple matches at the end of the year where he's winning those matches and he just got caught with some things that he's not accustomed to. Um, you know, with more mat time, he will be accustomed to those things. And now those matches that he's winning, he's finishing. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to really tack on a lot of wins. Um, and who else did you mention? Um, let's see. It was uh, – uh, Aiden or Al- Alton? Oh, Alton Noel. Yeah, and again, an- another one with limited experience. But I tell you, every time, every time his name was called, um, he would work hard. He would work hard, and and sometimes it's it's tough because wrestling. You know, I, I've said this plenty of times before. Wrestling is is one of the more humbling sports you're ever going to run run across, um, because you know it's not one of those things that you know our sport is not based on play. You know, it's it's a it's a you have to have a warrior's mentality. You have to have a warrior's attitude. You have to be, you have to understand that. You know, unlike any other sport in the world, wrestling, you're going to get out of this sport, what you put into it. Um, and sometimes even that's not enough, you know, because, you know, you're putting in, you're doing everything your coaches are asking you to do. You're doing the road work and, you know, you're getting up for early morning lifts, all stuff that we expect in our program. Um, and, and sometimes you, you're just not getting out of it what you think you deserve as far as wins and losses. And we tell all of our guys, if you're in, if you're in a home, the Homer wrestling program, just and and your indicator of success is just about wins and losses and getting your hand raised, you know, you're going to be sorely disappointed. You know, we, we talk about things and I think Sammy mentioned this in a different interview. You know, we talk a thing about things that, you know, the core of our program, character, class, responsibility, communication, um, you know, all the things that are going to make that will inherit, you know, it's going to make our men not only better young men, but, you know, Lord willing, the best men. Some other guys that uh, picked up some wins for you this year, uh, I was talking about them again, another freshman, uh, Jack Brady's in there, and also he, he only picked up one man, but he, hey, you got to win this year in, in a varsity match out of 10 tries, uh, uh, Matthew Fish. Yeah, f- Fish and. Fish and Alden Lowell, they're they're buddies, man, and and they're kind of they they kind of were on the same path this year. Um, you know, I I really enjoy them a lot. High character kids, and you know, I'm I'm really looking forward to you know what they can accomplish when they come back, you know, next year after having the taste of and and they wrestled a lot of RC matches for us. You know, um, you know they were, you know, their feet were to the fire a lot this year. You know, and and never once, and, and this just shows. You know the character of of Matt Fish and all. No, never once did they look at me and, and and say no. I you know I don't I don't want this opportunity. You know they attacked it head on. And and Jack Brady, um, Jack Jack came into the season. I don't know if he really knew what to expect. You know not only you know from you know from what we do as far as on a at a team level, but really what to expect from the sport. And Jack was one of those guys at the end of the year who, very athletic, incredibly athletic young man, um, really started to recognize, I think, how good he could be after taking advantage of some things that we were doing, you know, in and out of the room. Um, He's one of those guys, He towards the end of the year, even when the guys were going to the States, he never missed a lift, you know. Uh, Christopher Slade, another one. Hunter Lyons, another one. You know, you know their seasons were effectively over. Um, you know, and they came in not only to push their teammates but to push themselves. I th- I thought that was uh, uh, that's incredibly special. You know, so I'm really you know a lot of these guys. I know I'm, you know, I talk about I can't wait. I can't wait. I really can't. I really can't wait to see you know what their hard work. You know what their dedication was. That you know what's that going to mean to them and. And really, what's that, you know, what's that going to turn into? You know, because re- realistically, like I said, in the schedule that we we wrestle, I mean, we had five guys with over 30 wins, you know, and, and we graduated two of them, you know. Um, but we have those guys, you know, they may not be household names yet, you know, but we have those guys that, that, that are going to fill those spots well. And they're going to represent themselves, you know, our district, their community, and most certainly, you know, our wrestling program to the best of their ability. And of course, a couple, one of the couple of these guys that, you know, maybe next year will be will be their year. They're still going to be in a 
you know, a tough weight class as far as uh, one of them is a two, uh, 215. The other is a 285, so that, the door is open a little bit more there, but the other one's a 215. But who knows? He could bounce up. Uh, he's a junior this year, uh, Colby Anderson, and then the freshman, uh, Seth uh, Beattie. Yeah, um, you know we didn't we didn't get we didn't get to see them too much this year. Uh, we didn't get to see them too much this year, but you know who knows? Next year might be a different year, and we'll we'll get them on the mat and see what they can do. Another guy uh, kind of came out of his shell during football season. Really kind of started to shine at the end of the football season and uh, became a good contributor. He's a junior again. Another guy that didn't get a lot of time on the mat, you know, varsity wise this year. But Sean Brown. Yeah, he's he's another one. He's he's right there with. With <clears throat> beating Anderson, we didn't get to see see him too much this year, uh, but I've actually had a lot of conversation with Sean, and and I'm really hoping he does. Uh, you know, he makes choices that are in his best interest, and he's he's on the mat with us next year because he's shown he went to camp with us last year along with uh, Seth Beatty, and he he really did very well. I think he learned he probably learned more about himself at the camp we went to last year than anybody else. Um, and it was nice. It was nice to see. I, you know, I, I like Sean a lot, and, and I hope he can, you know, finish his high school career um, with us competing. Another freshman uh, to look forward to, hopefully next year, Gavin Carr. Gavin Carr, yeah, he was new for us this year. Uh, his family moved back into the district. Uh, his his younger brother actually started wrestling uh, junior high for us as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, we'll see. You know, we'll see. Those are those those guys' the names you're listing off now are kind of those anomalies where we're not not quite sure what we're going to get. Um, but you know, I think I think we've proven, especially in the last six seven years, and and traditionally here at Homer, you know, if you buy into what we're what we're putting out there, and, and you take advantage of the countless resources you have here at Homer, uh, you're inevitably going to get better. Another one of the seniors that uh, didn't get varsity match time this year, I believe he was around most of the year also, Bryson Coggins. Coggins? Oh, Bryson Coggins, yeah. He he was not around most of the year, but he def- he started with us. Bryson, I, I'm, I'm incredibly fond, fond of Bryson. You know, I like Bryson a lot. Um, he actually went to camp with us as well. Um, started out the season, you know, had a lot of momentum and, and didn't finish the year with us. Um, but... Again, he's you know I, I I'm, I'm incredibly fond of Bryson and and I was disappointed that he didn't finish the year with us. But you know again I wish him nothing but the best. Um, about a, one of the sophomores, he's right in the middle of that. And let's those gauntlet matches between 138 and you know the 170 pound weight class. Uh, Nick Hines, is a sophomore. Uh, Nick Nick Hines, um, he started some of the preseason stuff. Uh, and then he, he's no longer at Homer, so okay. you know whether whether he comes back or not. I you know I don't know, um, but he he was one that was incredibly excited for the season, and and we were excited to have him. There was a sophomore, to, or excuse me, a senior. They did pick up a couple wins this year at the 126. So uh, when he was out there, uh, David uh, Limgos. David Limoges. We he, I tell you, probably. I can say that probably the most passionate guy on our team. Dave has been wrestling with us now, geez, I think minus the COVID year, three years. He he got a couple varsity wins, and, and I tell you what, his passion for our wrestling family, not just our sport, but our wrestling family is contagious. He is one of those guys that, you know, if if he did miss, miss a practice, which I can't remember ever, if he did miss a practice, you knew something was up because he loved being around our family that much. David, um, he's one of our seniors who, who, you know, I'm going to miss them all. You know how that goes. But he's probably one of the guys I'm going to miss the most. He he is a passionate young man that I only wish I only wish the best for out of life. And the last couple of guys here, another couple of young guys that, uh, you know, you know, Possibly very bright futures here. A sophomore, uh, Luke McCloskey, and a, a freshman, uh, Colin Murphy. Yeah, yeah. Outside of being an Eagles fan, Luke is a great kid. Um, I joke with him and his family about that all the time. Actually, Coach Nave is an Eagles fan too, and and uh, we had a lot of fun with that this year. Um, Luke, L- you know, Luke battles, and Luke is incredibly strong for his size. I know he puts in a lot of. Uh, a lot of work in the weight room outside of our room as well, and and he really took to, you know, the strength and conditioning portion of what we did, uh, very well. Um, he's one of those guys, um, Luke and Colin, 
you know, both those guys because, you know, Colin, Colin is brothers with Owen and a and, uh, phenomenal family. And, and, you know, I think Colin, especially being at one of those heavier weights, you know, once he learns how to wrestle like a heavier guy, uh, more consistently, I think he's going to win a lot of matches. But, you know, Luke is also one of those guys who, you know, I hope both of them take full advantage of what we do in the off season. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be a full season, but they get in, get on the mat, get working, uh, you know, work on their mat sense and just their experience. You know, maybe hit a couple matches here and there. Um, you know, I, I think they're going to recognize that, you know, their growth, their trajectory is going to just skyrocket. Um, you know, Luke is one of those guys, too, being at the lighter weights. Um, you know, he's going to get, he already does, but he's going to get to a point where he can overpower some kids. You know, he's that strong. Um, so I know Coach Dubuque in the weight room really loves him. And I know Coach Lanave, uh talked, spoke incredibly highly of him all year long. Let's, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, well, part of it, I know he was involved with the youth program for many years because Sammy was coming up through. But uh, talk about a little bit about, you know, the coach you have, you know, Jeff Sorensen, of course, has been helping out uh, more on the JV side. But, you know, he's around with Sammy, of course, on the mat this year more. Uh, and like Casey Lanave and uh, and and you know your new your new weight guy that I think he Dylan Dubuque you know, yeah Dylan Dubuque I think he just pretty much came this year because I know a lot of guys yeah. talked about what he what he brought to the table this year yeah yeah he he uh, is a first year guy um, and I tell everybody willing to listen I you know they you know I know the head head coach gets a lot of um, you know people talk a lot about the head coaches and 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 I get it but I tell you I'm I'll be the first one to tell you you're, you know. Head coaches, myself especially, I'm only as good as the people around me. Um, and, you know, I think as far as a coaching staff, I mean, I'm talking from youth level all the way up, you know, top notch. I, I think we're in a better position than anybody in the state. Um, we just have people, and I'm talking about Coach Anave, Coach Dubuque, Coach Sorensen. Um, you know, Casey Slade has been a, a youth administrator for us. You know, all the guys we have in the room. I mean, I could go down and list everybody, but just high character guys that are doing it for the right reasons. And those those right reasons are all of our young men and, and young women who are trying to, you know, really progress and grow in our sport and in our, our wrestling family. I Casey Casey and I talk about this all the time. You know, again, I'm I'm kinda of partial to Cortland State. I coached there for a while. Um, better part of a decade. And uh, a lot of our assistant coaches, uh, you know, even our short-term guys come from Cortland State. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of what we do, you know, the foundation of what we're trying to do as a program, you know, I brought over um, is really reflected at you know at Cortland State. Um, Dylan Buke, first-year guy, was you know a football American and national qualifier for Cortland. Great guy to have in the room. Uh, hammer in the weight room. Uh, Casey Lanave, he. Casey, I mean, he's my brother. You know what I mean. He, he and I have have grown, have grown together. You know, in this program, um, I couldn't be prouder of that young man. I call him a young man. I mean, he's, you know, definitely, definitely much younger than I am. Um, but the you'd be hard pressed to find anybody with more heart than him. Um, and more committed to what we're trying to do, more committed to our young men. Um, and, you know, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I, I guess it's, it's it, I, I hold a lot of pride not only in the, in the individuals, you know, Dylan, Casey, Jeff, Jeff and I, uh, excuse me, Coach Sorensen, you know, we go way back, way back to college days. Um, you know, the first day he was on at Cortland State's campus, on Cortland State's campus after transferring in from University of Buffalo, you know, we hit it off from day one, and, and lo and behold, our lives come full circle. And, and you know, now we live in the same community and, and uh, you know, watching watching his son, you know, do the things he's doing. But also, you know, our families, <clears throat> you know, again, they talk about, you know, the Homer wrestling family. We really are a family. Um, I wouldn't rather be any other place in the world. I really wouldn't. Um, you know, I know you got me ca talking about the coaches, and I'm skipping from here and there, but it's it's almost like I can't say enough positive things about the situation we're in. Um, you know, I think Casey, you know, after my first year, Casey came, uh, came over from Cortland State, and, you know, in a relatively short amount of time, 
you know, together along with the program and along with our, our community and our family support. I mean, we're all together. We, you know, I think we've won 93, 94 matches in, in six years, you know, and, and that's impressive. And, that, and that's not just because of one person. It's not, you know, most first and foremost, it's about the kids. But I tell you, you know, between our district and our families and really the love and the support you know, and, and the relationships that we have in this program, I, I don't think there's really any ceiling to what we can do. I mean, you know, we do have the potential to be that prominent program within our section and within our state. I thought the last thing I was going to say, yes, you're going to lose some good seniors this year, but uh, maybe snuck up on a few people this year, like say 18-3 and three overall, maybe snuck out on the, up on a few people that – You'll be a team coming back next year, like a Central Valley Canada. You're going to come back with a bullseye in your back next year after this 18-3 run. Well, you know, we talked about that with some of our individuals this year. You know, you have a bullseye in your back. All that means is that people respect what you're doing. You know, they they want a little taste of what you've earned, you know, and, and make no mistake about it, everybody, you know, from top to bottom, we've earned it. You know, we've earned it through a lot of time. Um you know, a lot of time away from our own families. You know, I, I know I'm fortunate to have a wife who, um, you know, gives me the opportunity. And I mean that. I'm not, you know, that's that specifically said gives me the opportunity to, you know, spend that much of time, that much time away. Because what we're growing is, is special. And what we're growing is hopefully something, you know, a legacy that our own families can buy into. You know, my young ones, I have two young ones that are in the youth program. I think we're like 75 kids strong in our youth program. Uh, Coach Sorensen and, and uh, you know, another, another one of my best friends, Ben Locke, is now coaching um, another Cortland State All-American. Um, you know, he's helping coach in the junior high program, and, and they started out 29 kids deep. You know, it's it's just a good situation, and, and it's kind of revealing, especially after a COVID year, to have kind of numbers, those numbers like that. Um, you know, and, and we're only going to get stronger. I mean, you know, I'm our program's going to take on. I mean, we've always been good with you know numbers. I think, you know, because you know of how we do things, the structure that we've built, and the framework that we use to be successful. But I think, you know, you have at the top, you have like a Talon Hubbard. You know, you have a Sam Sorensen. I mean, you know, they're going to adopt. They're going to see that. They're going to, you know, that's going to grow momentum. That's going to motivate people and. You know, once you start adopting how, you know, their persona on the mat, I mean, you've you've got like a talent. I think one of, probably to me, one of his most revealing matches of the year was sectional finals. Obviously, it was a sectional final in his first sectional championship. And, you know, he very easily, uh, with Trevor Waugh from Beaver River, very easily could have sat on a 9 nothing win, got the major, and then moved on to the state tournament. But I think... You know, he's he's just a shark, you know. Um, he was sitting there. I don't know if you were there, but, you know, it was 9 nothing, third period, and that wasn't good enough for him. And, and he just attacked. He attacked and ended up with a pin. And, you know, not only does that help us as a team, but I think that just showed everybody. That's like, you know, I'm, he's here to win. And whether it's a sectional tournament, state tournament, dual meet, it doesn't matter. could be in the room. He's here to win, He's and he's here to dominate. You know, Sammy's the same way, you know, but it's just, you know, they were our bookends, 110, you know, 215, and they were kind of the motor that helped everybody else run. Well, Jason, I want to take you take uh, time to, you know, talk about everybody on the team. Like I said, we talked about the two state champs, where, you know, we'll talk about everybody else, because like we said, it was a great season, and uh, just look for more when next winter rolls around. Not that I want to think about winter already again, but uh, obviously next winter, I know, Sammy's got some agenda stuff to take care of this uh, summer yet that he's got to work on, he said, and uh, I'm sure uh, Talon will be the same way. I started both will be doing a bunch of off-season stuff. But, well, uh, hopefully we have a lot of them like that. <laughs> but know. thanks for taking time to Austin. Again, congratulations on a great season. Well, and, and again, Tom, I think I mentioned this Saturday, thanks for what you know doing what you do because, you know, uh, highlighting not only our program but our sport because that's important. Not enough people do it. 
And with that said, that'll do for this edition of TV on the Net. Today's show brought to you by AmeriQ Credit Union for every day for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By Right Angle Creek Farm and Marathon, all natural, pasture raised Angus beef from our farm to your table. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle dazzle. Check them out at Royal Auto Group.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance to Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobos in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary-specific options. Nikki C's your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customers' needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, uh, printed, uh, bleh, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at one 800 417 7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607 753 1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe and Marathon, open seven days a week for sit in dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carry out and catering for some events. Check them out online at rileyscafe.com or call 607 849 6434. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland. Open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for the new food truck coming this spring. And by Crop Growers, LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact KC Slade at 607-591-2460 for more information. So once again, congratulations to the Homer wrestlers on a great season. Of course, two state champions, Dylan Hubbard and Sam Sorensen. And thanks for Coach Jason Reynolds for taking time to talk to us today. I'm Tom Vartanian. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.